Here we go with part two of 24 different listing attraction strategies to generate more listings in 2024. Now, like I said, this is part two of a four part series about 24 different marketing focused strategies and tactics to generate more listings in 2024. You're going to find with some of the strategies and tactics that they're a bit more immediate. Hey, go do this to go get a listing and others of the strategies and tactics are going to take some time to really mature, but they're going to produce potentially lots of listings over time. And it's up to you to take an assessment of where you at in your business right now and what makes the most sense to be deployed in your strategies in 2024. And I should also mention to you, it does not matter what order you watch these videos in. Yes, this is a four part series. You can watch this video and circle back and watch part two. And then if you're catching this when parts three and four are already out, it makes no difference. So long as you watch all four videos to take all 24 strategies and tactics in so you can decide what makes the most sense for you to go get those listings because you've heard the expressions over and over again, you got a list to last. So let's list to last together. Welcome to this week in marketing. My name is Jason Pantana. I'm your host, and I'm so glad you're watching today. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and then press that little icon right next to it that looks like a bell to turn on notifications. So whenever we publish new videos to our channel, just like this, you're going to be the first to know about them and the first to take action on those ideas. And this video is all about getting more listings. So without further ado, let's dive in. Our first listing attraction strategy out of the gate, we're gonna pick it up at number seven because remember last week's video was one through six. Number seven is case study postcards. You are likely familiar with postcards like Just Listed or Just Sold Postcards whereby your listing sells or maybe you represented the buyer and you wanna still market to the neighbors around that sale because you were after all the selling agent and there's this idea of a Just Sold Postcard that goes to all the neighbors proximate to where that sale happened and it's theoretically designed to position that agent as the one who got the job done. It gives you a track record, it creates social proof, and it creates this idea that the sellers who might be within that group of homeowners being targeted, somebody might want to sell because you know the expression, when one home sells, two or three more typically come along over time. And so there's an opportunity there. But I'm here to say that just listed and just sold alone is not enough. It's a little bit overdone. And it typically is just an announcement that doesn't necessarily showcase that you, the agent, were the responsible party for causing that home to sell. So instead, think about case study postcards. It could be a testimonial from your client that outlines what you did. It could be a how we did it type of list of all the measures you put in place to cause that home to sell for the best possible terms. It could be varying data points about your process compared to what others do when they're simply skimming the average and how you go above and beyond. The point is you want to show every homeowner, i.e. every prospective seller amongst those homeowners, that when the time comes for them to sell to list their properties, it's you and nobody else because you've best positioned your agent brand as the one who can get the job done favorably. The truth is, whenever homes list and sell in a given area for less than the market will bear, it's robbing every other homeowner of their potential equity. And so reality is you should position yourself as the agent who is the guard at the door of that entire community who is focused and committed to getting the best possible terms for every listing sold in the neighborhood for the benefit of their sellers, of course. They owe their fiduciary responsibilities to that seller, but also to the betterment of the community overall. Because every prospective seller should know that who you work with matters. Next on our list, number eight is better buyer follow-up. If you look at the profile of home buyers and home seller reports that the National Association of Realtors publishes every year, and these reports are 100 plus pages each year of facts and figures and data points about buyers and sellers in the United States real estate marketplace, if you look at that, you can calculate that roughly a third to half of all buyers are also <gasps> sellers. So the question is, how's your follow-up game? Generating buyer leads is typically easier, there's more leads to be gotten, so to speak, than there are seller opportunities. Whether it's through home search campaigns on PPC, buying your leads through a third party portal, open houses, there are a variety of ways to generate buyer leads because buyers are searching for homes. But think about it, a third to half of those buyers have a property to sell, and it may not be in your marketplace, but there could at least be a referral opportunity. So how effective are you at asking the right questions, building the rapport, and helping understand not just what the buyer's looking to buy, but the entire higher sequence of cause and effect of their transaction because there are moving parts that need to be factored in and it may be that there are future listing opportunities if only you ask the right questions of your buyer leads. So better buyer follow-up means more listings. 
Number nine on the list is seller streaming ads. You've heard me talk ad nauseum, I think, if you've been following this show for any measure of time, about YouTube in-stream ads, i.e. YouTube commercials. These are those little commercials that play before, during, or after whatever video you're attempting to watch on YouTube, and they are money, they are opportunities, because they're relatively inexpensive to run. And I would make the argument that they're the most underutilized advertising format there is in all marketing of all real estate professionals. Because they're YouTube ads and YouTube is owned by Google, they're technically Google ads, which means as an advertiser, you get benefits galore because it's Google ads. So you can target your ads geographically, meaning people have to be in your marketplace in order to be eligible to even see your advertisements. So you're not wasting budget and it's not just random. And you can also target different audience segments. Like for example, you can target homeowners. That's exactly what Shane Bergman does. Now, Shane is one of our rock star coaching clients down in Florida. And in fact, we interviewed him on this podcast a few weeks ago. I would highly recommend you watch that episode as he talks about his strategy to create in-stream ads that are seller focused, whereby he outlines his value proposition to sellers. And in fact, he's running these ads with a pretty low budget. It doesn't take a lot of money and he's generating one to two listings every single month inside his geo farm because he is talking to the right audience with the right offer so that the folks who are looking to sell their properties watch his videos. Now I'm gonna get technical for a second. When you run a YouTube and stream ad, generally the way that you're bidding is called a max cost per view or a target cost per view. In other words, the way YouTube runs that ad is they're not gonna bill you unless there's a legitimate view. And assuming your video, the ad itself, is longer than 30 seconds, in order to count as a view, somebody has to watch for at least 30 seconds. So let's say that you're Shane Bergman and you're targeting homeowners in a specific area. We can agree not every homeowner's looking to sell, but think about it through the lens of YouTube and Google. They're gonna work to show your ad to people who are willing to watch for at least 30 seconds, which signifies they're thinking about selling. Because here Shane has created a straight up campaign that talks about his value proposition as a listing agent. What are his services? What's entailed in his service offering? And so if somebody watches for at least 30 seconds, they're thinking about selling. And on the flip, if somebody doesn't watch for 30 seconds, they may not be thinking about selling. So here's what I'm getting at. Algorithmically, YouTube is inclined to go find the people in the larger group of homeowners in a specific area who are actually thinking about selling. Let Google and YouTube go find your next listing for you with seller streaming ads. Number 10 on the list is your organic social media, which includes Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, LinkedIn, all of it includes your posts, it includes your videos, your vertical videos, your horizontal videos, et cetera, et cetera. I'm talking about your entire content strategy and I want you to bear in mind that fundamentally, you get what your content attracts. That means if you make content that's you know, for people who are looking to buy properties, then guess what? You're gonna get buyers. And if you make content that is overarching, designed for sellers, you're going to attract sellers and here's the reason why. It's because today's algorithms are focused on distributing content organically to people whose interests align. Why? Well, because these platforms wanna keep people on the platforms. And the way they keep people on the platforms is by getting them the right content with which they're likely to comment and engage and share and watch. If somebody just scrolls past your content immediately, it tells these platforms they don't wanna see stuff like that. But if they take the time to watch and engage your content, for instance, it tells the platforms, hey, start showing this content to people like this more often. And so think about your content. What are you attracting? Are you ensuring that your content is very locally focused so that the algorithms pick up on the fact that, hey, people who don't live in this geographic area may not care about your content. But if you make content that's hyper local focused, you're gonna train your algorithms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of them, to over time start showing your content to people who live locally because they are the ones whose interests align. So think Think about hyper-local content that, again, just the locals care about. Think about property tours in the area. Think about tips and advice that are relevant for prospective sellers in that specific marketplace, and over time, you will get what your content attracts, which will be listings. Number 11 on the list is one I quite like a lot, but it's gonna require a bit of elbow grease, a bit of sweat equity, and that is seller seminars. I'm thinking about some of our coaching clients, like Maureen Folan, who is an absolute rock star listing agent in Queens, New York, and she's crushing it with seller seminars. Now, seller seminars 
can be done virtually or in person or some hybrid combination, whatever you prefer is fine by me. But what matters is that they are recurring over time. Again and again and again, a flywheel, if you will, a flywheel of systems around how do you promote, how do you get people to come to the seminar? What is the experience of the seminar? Because what happens is when somebody comes to learn about the steps and the process involved in selling their home, and you are the one who conveys that useful information to them, it positions you as their guide. There are a lot of lead sources where the conversion is frankly abysmal. Like I think about online leads and on average, about 1% of online leads are converted to actually work with the agent on average who generated the lead. But when I consider the stickiness of a seller seminar, because it positions you as the guide to help somebody maximize their decisions to get the best possible results when it comes to selling their home, the conversion on seller seminars is going to be bananas. A lot of agents, don't look at the opportunity because it looks hard and it is hard or because it doesn't look like a lot of people coming to a seller seminar, two or three people. I wouldn't want to bother with that. 10 people. That's too much work for only that, but you're not looking and considering the conversion or the talkable factor whereby people start buzzing about you. Hey, you should go next week. They talk to other people who are thinking about selling and they start bragging about you because you are the expert and authority in the marketplace. I guess I'm getting passionate and carried away because I believe fundamentally that if you're not leveraging seller seminars and you have a gift for teaching and you have a gift for systems in terms of that flywheel of getting people to come to your event over and over and over again, again, whether it's virtual or not, I would look at you and say, you should really think about seller seminars because they could do a wonder in your business for more listings. Speaking of doing wonders in your business, our last item of the day, this is number 12, we're doing 24 in total. So there's still two more videos to come out going through 24 different marketing focused listing generation strategies and tactics for 2024. Number 12, our last one today is open houses. I gotta tell you, I love open houses. In fact, recently I did an entire episode only talking about the ins and outs A to Z of open houses. I highly recommend you go find that podcast episode. It's been in the past few weeks. We can put a link to it in the description and it will walk you through a fundamental process of how to be successful with open houses. Now, why do I like open houses? Well, today I like open houses in particular because they give you access to the neighbors around listing opportunities to position yourself as the best choice listing agent should any of those neighbors make a decision to go on market and sell their property. Part of what I love about open houses is open houses give you something to promote. It gives you a reason to reach out to the neighbors around your listings. It gives you a space to actually meet with in market buyers and sellers at the open house itself. And it gives you a reason to follow up to see what their feedback was about the property. Open houses give you what you need to market your business and prospect in your areas. I just, I love open houses. Are you being consistent with them? Are you talking to the neighbors around open houses? I would say, even if it isn't your listing, that doesn't stop you from talking to the neighbors about the listing you're hosting open this upcoming Saturday or Sunday or whenever the open house is, you should leverage open houses because they give you an inroad to talk to the neighbors around your listings or around the listings, whether it's through door knocking or circle prospecting or some kind of targeted ad campaign, the opportunity to be in front of neighbors and let them see the face that's associated with the sale of that property is something you cannot ignore. So if you wanna get more listings, do not overlook the power of open houses, specifically looking at them to target the neighbors. And if you're watching this podcast, you've likely heard Tom Ferry talk about mega open houses for years. And one of the tenets of a mega open house is the neighbor only preview or the neighbor only portion of the mega open house, whereby you invite the neighbors to an exclusive preview of the property. And again, you're getting more face time with the neighbors. In the video I talked about before, the entire podcast episode that I did recently that was just on open houses, we talked about a door knocking or a circle prospecting script, whereby you invite the neighbors and you say something to the tune of, I'm inviting you and every other neighbor to come to the open house this weekend because I wanna make this place look like a madhouse. I want it to be super busy so that when every buyer walks in, they think, oh my gosh, everybody's gonna buy this house and it creates a sense of urgency so that we get stronger offers because reality is for every dollar over asking, we can sell this property. It increases your bottom line equity on your property. So help me help you, so to speak. I'm a major believer in open houses. I'm a major believer in doing the work to get more listings, and this is one of those ways to do it. What I wanna know is, what are you gonna take action on? Let me know in the comments, what are the different strategies, tactics to get more listings that you're saying, hey, I'm in on those. 
Today's video was number seven through 12. We talked about one through six in the first video. So of the total 12 we've covered so far, what are you gonna get in on? What are you gonna do to get more listings in your marketplace? Let me hear from you in the comments and thank you so much for watching. Until next week, this is This Week in Marketing.